In today's video, I'm going to give you some simple four out basketball plays. These are plays that if you had a team that had one center and you had like a good rotation of centers, you could run a four out, one in, a couple of guards on the outside and get some easy baskets. So let's get down. Let's check this out. We're going to start with some easy motions and then we're going to go into some more complex set plays that you can run if you've got a more advanced basketball team. Let's get down. Let's check this out. Really quickly, make sure to go check out the unbeatable basketball zone defense, which is down in the description below if you're looking for a killer defense that basically traps the corners and doubles the low post. So basically to start, we're going to have four players on the outside of the three-point line and one player in the high post. Now you could start with having, instead of having that four out, you could technically start in a five out. Again, I've got a five out complete guide down in the description below, but... You can have player 5 cut up from the corner, or you can have player 5 cut up from the low post. Either way, you want this guy moving towards the ball when you pass that ball into the high post. Of course, if you choose to, of course, run a play, a 4-0 play, that has the high post getting the ball. So let's start in the four out, and what can we do? Well, player 1 has three, essentially three different options. He could make a risky point-to-point -point pass, which sometimes is a risky pass, or he could pass to player 5 in the high post or player 4 out on the wing. You can run this as a motion where if player 1 passes to player 5, player 1 has two different options. He can either set a screen away or a screen away to the other side. If player 1 sets that screen away, player 4 has two different options depending on how his defender is playing him. Let's bring a defender in here. If player four, his defender goes underneath that screen, player four could pop for that three point shot. That's one option. Because when you're using a screen, if your defender goes over top, you kinda wanna try and pop for a three. If however, player four is playing him tight and he wants to go over top of that screen, then player four needs to be able to read that and cut in towards the basket, in which case this could be an easy layup. We want to try and teach our players how to read their defenders at even the youngest of age groups. That just makes things easier when they get older. Not to mention, if they're already doing advanced things on the court, you're going to win more games. If player 4 cuts towards the rim, after that screen, and let's say he's not open, let's play, say his defender is really guarding him tight. At this time, we'll have player 2 fill that spot that was here, player 3 that will fill player 2 spot, and then player 4 will pop out and fill player 3's spot. Now we're still in that 4 out, but player 5 has that ball. Player 5 can then pass out to any one of these 4 players, or of course he could attack the rim for a basket, that's an option as well, but let's say he passes out to player 2. At that time, he could go and set a screen for somebody else, a back screen on one, a back screen on four, a back screen on three, and of course any one of those options are fantastic. Let's say player three gets that screen, he cuts towards the basket, and now when that happens, player three is now that post player. Player five fills player three's spot, and of course if he's open we better be hitting him for that layup. But, if he's not open, he's going to return back to the high post. Now let's say we don't initiate that pass into player 3, and let's say we did a pass to player 1 as an example. Now player 2 has an option. He can either set a screen away for player 5, he could set a screen for player 1, or he could wait for player 3 to set a screen for him. If player 3 sets that screen, then at that time, player 2 will cut towards the basket, and then, if he's open, lay up. If not, player 3 takes his spot, and player 2 is now the post player. Basically, any time that player 3, or in this case, any high post player, sets a screen for somebody, if that player doesn't score, he then becomes that post player. Now, if we return that basketball back to player 3, just because these are essentially the two starting spots, we can basically tell our team or teach our team to run more advanced things off of this motion. So for example, player 3 passes to player 1, and let's say he sets that screen for player 1. Player 2 could set the staggered screen, this is, this is a staggered screen, and player 1 could then use that staggered screen. Basically it's a, it's a double screen that this secondary player will then try and 
line up his screen to wherever player one's defender goes. So for example, if player one's defender goes underneath that screen, then player two wants to try to set up that screen and take a step quickly, get his feet planted before he sets that screen, so that now player one comes off and should be wide open for the shot or a drive or whatever it may be. If player one, of course, tries to cheat on that screen, player one needs to be able to be able to cut back. So anytime a player tries to cut off a screen and cut off the ability to use a screen, you need to also teach your players to be able to drive towards the rim because now he's in jail behind you. If this player goes over top of that screen, then player two is going to set that secondary screen higher so that player one, of course, rubs shoulders yet again with player two. Again, because player two is the staggered portion of that screen, he's going to be setting that screen to wherever that defender goes. On a staggered screen, I personally prefer the first screener to roll towards the basket, secondary screener popping for the three, because then that gives player one a couple of different options where he can pass to, of course, the cut man or the roll man, and then he can also have the option to pass for a three or jack up a mid-range himself. Now, I personally love running the five-out offense. That's why I, of course, wrote the complete guide to the five-out offense again down in the description, but this is what I'm going to be running with my team, or at least one of my teams. And that is, player five is going to be going to the high post out of the five-out. We're going to have our players move over like so, just like it's going to be four out. So we're going to have five out to four out plays this year and vice versa. But we're going to move so that we can get that ball into player five. At this time, player one is going to cut towards the basket and he could be open. That's that's definitely an option. But at this time, player two is going to come down for a pin down screen and player three and four are going to go down for what some may call a sandwich screen. But in reality, it's called an elevator screen. Player one is now going to be looking at the center and looking at the defense. He should be trying to post up his man. He should have a full view of the court to see where the defenders are. Now he makes the decision. Whose screen is he going to use? Is he going to be using player two's screen? Or will he be using that 3-4 elevator screen? Now this is a play from the Golden State Warriors. Player one would have been Steph Curry because he moves extremely well off ball. The Warriors tend to favor the elevator screen and player five at that point will pass him the ball for the three. This is obviously a play that I'm using with my high school team and it should be pretty successful because we have a player who can shoot threes like Steph Curry. I hope that this video has helped you. Make sure to go check out the complete guide to the five out offense down in the description below, but also the unbeatable basketball zone defense down there as well. I'll see you guys again next time.